Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today. I would like to make this presentation very, very interactive. So if you have any questions at any time, please don't hesitate to let me know. Um, I would like to provide some clarifications before I lose all of you trying to figure out where my accent comes from. Uh, I am Brazilian. My native tongue is Portuguese. The Italian last name, like everything else in my life, is my husband's fault. <laughs> so uh, the agenda today will cover a uh, couple of topics. We will start by providing a context. What are the five forcing functions that we at EMC believe are fundamentally changing the way we are going to do governance, risk, and compliance, and at the same time are actually forcing us uh, uh, to rethink the whole uh, business logic. Um, the challenge, we will then talk about the four challenges that you as an organization have to migrate and to respond to those five forcing functions. And then we will talk about the three major GRC game changers, how we are doing today and how we should be doing in the future. And we'll talk about the two solution approaches to move you from where you are and where you want to be. And then uh, we'll talk about one path to success where EMC can provide you with some help. So let's start with the five forcing functions. We are going decreasing order five, four, three, two, one. So uh, we'll start with the five forcing functions. The first one, there is an information explosion and EMC being where the information lives, if you have not heard about that, is our fault because we have been trying to raise awareness around this topic for a very, very long time. By 2011, the digital size, um, the digital universe, as uh, uh, the analysts call, will be 10 times as it was five years ago in 2006. Um, what happens is that 70% of that digital universe is actually generated by individuals, but enterprises are actually responsible for the compliance, security, and all the regulatory um, uh, proofs uh, non-repudiation included of 85% of that information. And our digital shadow is much larger than the information that we actually generate. So for every email that you actually send that is a shadow of information that is actually generated to account for the fact that you sent that particular email at that particular time for these particular folks and for backup and for recovery and um, all the all the trail that is necessary that is much larger than the information that was generated in the first place. So the second problem is is that uh, this information would not be as big a problem as just buying more storage from EMC, of course. But uh, the problem is that you have an overwhelming amount of regulations. So now the information is exploding, the number of regulations are also exploding, and you have to abide to those regulations in the context of the information that was generated. Uh, the current administration is doing a wonderful job to the increase on the number of regulations, and the U.S. Federal Register of Regulation has grown, for example, from 16 pages in 1936 to 80,000 pages in 2008. Uh, and uh, uh, your company's regulatory shadow actually grows larger as the business expands. This is something you cannot avoid. The moment that you actually do business with a company that is located overseas or the moment that you actually do any transaction that may have personally identifiable information, for example, or, or, or that you receive a payment from a credit card information, you're subject to more and more regulation. So you, you don't have a choice to actually neglect that. The third forcing function is the fact that we are grown used to a near real time transparency. It, it is still the case that we actually only care about regulation when we know that the audit is coming tomorrow, right? But it, it's not a sustainable model. Why? Because uh, uh, the same way that we actually grew over time to become more comfortable with performance tools that tell you how your infrastructure is doing and how your finance is doing, uh, you will grow uh, more and more accustomed to have real-time response to the risk, uh, real-time analysis to the risk you're incurring, real-time analysis to uh, the compliance or non-compliance that you have in an organization. 
Today, a CEO actually has um, real-time information about sales, about customer relationship. He has real-time information about the infrastructure, how many data centers he has, and, and where uh, um, the information actually lies and how it's be performing. He has no real-time information from a compliance and risk perspective. And that has to change. So there is a one belief that uh, key risk indicators, key <coughs> compliance indicators are, no, uh, are nothing but another type of performance indicators. How am I doing from a compliance perspective? How am I doing from a risk perspective? And we need to integrate those frameworks. Um, the, uh, the, f uh, the fourth reporting function is on the adoption of what we call a hyperextended virtual enterprise. The way that we actually do business today with globalization and with the intense collaboration, it's impossible to actually understand where your enterprise ends and where your partner or customer actually begins. The boundaries are very, very blurry and um, you have to ensure that all the information yeah. that uh, traverses to your organization is actually secure and is actually compliant. So let me give you an example what we mean by that. Um, five years ago, there was the whole issue of security. And uh, there is still is, but at five years ago was very, very, very severe. And one approach was, oh, let us try and put firewall, uh, a firewall throughout the organization. We are going to actually put those devices that are going to look at all the information as it leaves and at all the information as it comes in. And uh, we found many, many ways to actually overcome that by simply put the information on a fob and walking out the door without anybody knowing that you had confidential and private information. So uh, one of the solutions that was proposed was to actually encrypt the information, was to actually provide access to lock the information. So now it doesn't matter where the information goes, the information is self-protected. It's like adding a shell to the information itself. So even if someone actually puts the information in a fob, it is unable to encrypt, it is unable to open the file unless the access files are permitted. The same, the same methodology needs to apply from a governance risk and compliance. The information needs to carry that same shell of what is the type of information, what are the regulations that are actually uh, associated with that information as one measure of, of security and uh, carry that information as it moves. So when someone tries to actually access the information, we look at the role that the person has in the organization and whether or not that role gives access rights to the information from a compliance perspective and we automate the traceability and the auditability so that the access is non repudiated. So um, the fifth fourth in function is what we are experiencing, which is the cloud burst of virtualization. Now, for those that are not too technical, I will try and explain uh, what is the concept of the private cloud. So here's the rationale behind. Today, your organization has a data center. That the data center, your organization may have a data center. So your data center is actually confined into brick walls. You have uh, um, the servers, you have the network, you have the switches, you have your storage device. All the technology is under your control. This is what we call your internal cloud. It's your internal infrastructure, it's your internal technology cloud. As we move to adopt more and more uh, services from third parties, as you try to use a storage from Amazon.com, as you try to use computing resources from Google, for example, your data center is now comprised of the the, your traditional data center, which we call the internal cloud, 